there sure is a lot of benefits to being a human rather than, say, a fish. Self-regulating temperature, arms and legs, Netflix, I mean, the list is pretty long, but we don't necessarily have the best deal on every front. For example, let's take childbirth. Welcome to the world, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen just how much that sucks for a woman to go through? Maybe you have actually done it yourself. Heck, maybe you are giving birth while watching this video right now. Now that would be pretty crazy. The point is that it would be a lot easier just to drop a few million eggs onto a leaf and then use hand-to-hand -hand combat to fight off any predators until they are old enough to go to school. But that's just not how things worked out, I guess. All the more reason to take a look at the fascinating ways fish get the job done, from the fish that has a real mouthful to the ocean's smoothest seducer. This is how these 15 fish lay eggs. <sighs> Number 15. Tilapia. The tilapia kind of sounds like some sort of dessert, but in fact it is a kind of fish, which is something you probably guessed due to the theme of this video. In fact, it is known as the Mozambican tilapia because it lives in Mozambique but it also hangs out in Malawi, South Africa, Swaziland, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. So it's a pretty cosmopolitan kind of fish. This fish is polygamous, which means it's kind of a free love sort of fish, not the sort of fish that you find at church on Sunday. And it likes to reproduce all year round, so tilapias know how to have a good time. And more evidence of this is that tilapia are mouth brooders. This means the female gathers the eggs in her mouth, and then the males fertilize them there. Which is great news for tilapia dudes who are all about third base. The female then carries the eggs in her mouth while they incubate, sometimes spitting them out so she can feed, before gathering them back up again until they're good and ready to take on the ocean all by themselves. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Sleeping. Number 14. Pufferfish. The white spotted pufferfish knows how to put on a pretty impressive show when it comes to impressing a female. They create the most incredible geometric patterns in the sand, showing off just how good their design skills are. To the female pufferfish, there's nothing more erotic than an architect. As you can imagine, building structures out of sand and underwater is a thankless task to maintain his love nest, otherwise it will be washed away. But if he perseveres, a female might consider checking out the nest. If she likes it, they kind of hook up and vibrate together. To grab a female's attention, he creates something that almost defies belief which makes the female drop her eggs in the nest. And just like with people, once one girl likes you, it seems like a whole bunch of others suddenly do too. A successful puffer fish will mate with several females in his magnificent palace in a short amount of time, but then they leave him and he is left with countless children from various mothers, which he has to care for in his crumbling ruin of a home, like some mad figure from a Victorian novel. Fighting off predators, he does his best to raise a happy brood before repeating the whole task again the next breeding season. Number 13. Clownfish. Crusty, bozo, the evil thing from it, all of these guys it seems were inspired by one little fish which live in the warm waters of the Indian Ocean, Red Sea, and in the Pacific, especially around the Great Barrier Reef. These guys are extra distinctive because of what looks like crazy bright orange face and body paint. So far, researchers have not confirmed whether they can ride a tiny bicycle, squirt water from a flower, or murder children in Maine every 27 years, but what they can do is get down with the ladies, and these are some pretty naughty fish who like to chase, bite, and tease the females. Just like at school it seems, being mean to girls kind of works, because before you know it, they are wrapped up in a friendly sea anemone laying some eggs. That's right, they have a symbiotic relationship with sea anemones. 
and they look after one another, attacking each other's predators, and the clownfish has a kind of moving, bright yellow medieval mace to help protect its eggs, which is pretty useful. Most fish would be poisoned by the anemone, but not the clownfish, which has some kind of immunity not fully understood by marine biologists. Maybe it's all that crazy makeup they're wearing. Number 12. Octopus Okay, it's not a fish, but it lives in the water with fish, so it's more like a fish than you or me, right? So it's going on the list because it's worth talking about octopuses and how they lay their eggs, because these are like super-brained aliens with eight legs. Would you want to miss out on learning about that? Thought not. So female octopuses lay their eggs and then spend a lot of time painstakingly weaving them into kind of strands. Even with six extra arms, this takes a lot of time. These devoted mothers will then sit for weeks, or even up to a year in some species, constantly cleaning and caring for the eggs. Even stopping eating herself, living only for the eggs, she will blow water over them to make sure they have oxygen and meticulously pick off any algae. And there's a lot of them. There can be tens of thousands of eggs in one brood. Eventually, the eggs all hatch at once, and the little plankton will swim off towards the surface in a huge and spectacular cloud. At this point, the octopus mother dies in some species, like the giant Pacific octopus, having given everything for her babies. Out of these thousands, usually only one or two will survive the dangers of the ocean and make it to adulthood. Godspeed, little doodles. Number 11. Squid so, let's just put the whole fish thing aside for a minute, but I promise we will be right back into it in the next topic. It's just all the drama of the octopus egg story got me thinking about how those other charismatic cephalopods, squid, got the job done. Answer is, in a way that's pretty cool. Squid, as we know, are mysterious and sometimes terrifying sea creatures. Next time you're on an overnight boat ride, head up on deck and scream, RELEASE THE KRAKEN, as loud as you can, and you'll see what I mean, total panic. Take it from me. Anyway, we don't even know how big giant squid really get, as they are pretty mysterious. Other than when they eat a whole warship or something like that. When they reproduce, they lay their eggs into egg cases, and all the squid moms will pull the egg cases together. So it looks like a flower. After that, the baby squid are pretty much up against it by themselves, as both parents die soon after mating. It's exhausting. Never try it. If the tiny squid can survive the hardships of squid youth, it can end up as a massive giant squid, measuring 30 feet or more in length. And then it can enjoy its favorite meal of rum marinated sailors. Number 10. Horn Shark a lot of sharks, in fact, most of them, give birth to live young. But some species, like all nine species of horn shark, lay eggs instead. Through spring and summer, the Californian horn shark will lay two eggs about every 14 days. And they come out in a crazy spiral shape that looks like an auger bit from an electric drill. They start off kind of soft, but then get harder. This amazing shell is made from the same stuff as human hair and fingernails. Inside is a fertilized egg, and a pretty well-protected one too. You'd think having a shark for a mom would be cool, but unlike the octopus, these blasé mothers just head right off straight after laying their eggs, leaving the baby shark to fend for itself. They get wedged in rocks and are pretty well protected there, although whelks have a special tool for drilling into shark eggs and slurping up the oak. After around seven months, the shark's picnic hamper runs dry and it's time to bust out of the egg and start looking for stuff to eat. And so the life of a new horn shark begins. Number 9. Anglerfish no beauty prizes on offer for this deep sea predator, anglerfish have huge and ferocious mouths, into which they lure prey with a dangling, fleshy tentacle like growth, which hangs off their heads like an angler's fishing line. But in spite of having a face only a mother could love, these fish have to reproduce. Fishing pole with a luminous lure at the tip, which they use to attract their prey. 
in this species, it's all about female domination, as the females are often way, way bigger than the males. I guess Mr. Anglerfish isn't always given much of a choice about whether he's in the mood or not. In fact, the males are so small by comparison, scientists didn't realize at first that they only live by attaching themselves to the females as parasites. If a male fails to find a female and attach itself, he will die, and the females can have a lot of males in her portable harem. Once the deed is done, the females lay an unusual sheet of transparent gelatinous material, which is 10 inches wide and 30 feet long. This then floats out in the sea until they hatch, with each egg having its own little space in the sheet. Number 8. Oscar Fish Oscar fish are known to aquarium owners as being among the most intelligent fish breeds adapted to aquarium life. They have great memories and can even be trained to do tricks. Oscar fish can also distinguish between different people and know which one is their owner. Pretty impressive. They come in a variety of colors, most popular being black with bright red scale colorations. They are also sometimes albino with red eyes, shades of blue or bright yellow. They can grow to one foot in length, so need plenty of space in an aquarium. These fish might be smart, but they are also pretty aggressive. Any other fish nearby during breeding time will be killed, and the courtship itself is violent, often resulting in the death of one or the other lovers, like some 80s Mexican soap opera. But if they stop abusing each other for a minute and get down to spawning, they are both excellent parents and will care for their fry until they are ready to face the world, or at least the aquarium tank alone. Number 7. Arowana if you're starting to get the impression that a lot of fish are kind of crazy when it comes to romance, you'd be right. Here's yet another fish that relies on violence as its main aphrodisiac, chasing and biting each other as courtship. Arowana just love to hurt each other. What kind of issues do fish grow up with? We need an aquatic Sigmund Freud down there to figure out what is going on. That we're filled with that slime, with that mucus that covers the entire fish. After the BDSM session is over, they will lie down side by side, which is a lot cuter. If anyone else comes near, they will attack them as a team, just to show they haven't quite done with all the violence just yet. When the female is good and ready, she lays a slow stream of eggs on the riverbed, which the male then fertilizes. After he's done that, he puts them all in his mouth. Uh, g gross. This is where the eggs will hatch, and little by little the young arowanas venture out into the water before returning to daddy's mouth. If this seems like amazing fathering, it's not all good news. Sometimes dad accidentally swallows a few of his babies. Accidentally, yeah, right, sure. Number 6. Siamese Fighting Fish the Siamese fighting fish is also known as a betta fish. So when you are with your aquarium buddies and they are bragging about whatever cool fish they have, you can just keep saying, that sounds awesome, but I have a betta fish. It will make you a lot of friends doing this. Anyway, when a betta fish wants to reproduce, the male will build a bubble nest and this will float to the top of your tank. Before you know it, you'll have a whole cluster of babies and you will know some baby fish aren't far behind. The male will then just hang out under his sweet nest of bubbles and wait for a female to come by. One will eventually show up and if his bubbles look good, she'll mate with him and then he'll take the fertilized eggs and push them into these little bubbles. One by one. Inside is plenty of oxygen, and it's good and clean. Now the male betta fish turns into a guard dog, protecting his bubbles full of babies with his life, not to mention pushing them back if they fall out. Once the fry are out of the nest, the dad betta fish will decide he's got betta things to do and leave them to figure it all out by themselves. After a joke like that, uh, can you blame them? Number 5. Jewel Fish the jewelfish is a pretty brightly colored fish from Africa, which looks like it is covered in bling. They are popular in aquaria due to their cool coloring. 
But this little African guy is seriously aggressive. As usual, they get to know one another by beating the hell out of each other. But once respect for the other's rage has developed, jewelfish form a pretty tight bond. In fact, they develop a shared love of attacking other fish, even other jewelfish, becoming a kind of underwater Bonnie and Clyde. Somewhere in the midst of their spree of violence and killing, they find a moment to get intimate, and once things have hit the spot, they will begin caring for their eggs. They are suddenly full of tenderness once the eggs are out, sharing parenting duties like any 21st century parent is supposed to do. Is this the secret to a happy relationship and a healthy and devoted approach to raising children? To occasionally indulge in murderous violence? Eh, not sure it would transfer so well to humans. Number 4. Skate the Pacific White Skate is a relative of sharks and rays. Colored all white, it lives pretty deep in the ocean. In fact, it's the deepest living skate of all, living up to 7,500 feet below the surface. This means they're pretty hard to study and get to know, being nearly two miles below. But scientists did manage to catch a glimpse of one recently and were able to learn some cool new things about how it cares for its eggs. In 2015, a remotely operated vehicle made its way around the Galapagos Marine Reserve and discovered a whole pile of Pacific white skate egg cases all nestled around a hydrothermal vent. The robotic arm of the submarine picked off four of them, so we could take a closer look. The most interesting aspect is the skate's use of these vents as a kind of nursery. In very deep and cold water, incubation takes a lot longer, but it's possible the warmth and nutrients provided by the vent help to speed things up a little. Still, the skate has to keep an eye on her eggs for at least four years. Scientists have estimated Estimated. One day, maybe we will know more about these bug-eyed, deep-water cousins of sharks and their amazing egg nurseries. Number 3. Jawfish Jawfishes use their relatively large jaws to burrow under the sand, which is where they like to live. They don't grow too big, and the biggest jawfish species can reach around a foot long, although most are way smaller. Jawfish are part of a small group, which includes seahorses, pipefishes, and cardinal fishes, in which the male plays the role of mother. They are mouth brooders, and this means that it is the male who brings up the little fish to term. Females dump all their eggs in the water. Then the males have to pick up pretty much the rest of the slack. First, they have to fertilize them, and once that is done, yep, in the mouth. He keeps them in for up to several weeks, not eating, focusing his energy on juggling the eggs around his mouth to aerate them, like having too many hard candies in your mouth. Once he's done, the kids aren't getting any further help. Jawfish fry are anything but trust fund babies. They are out on their own, from day one. Scientists don't really know why males take responsibility for brooding, but it may allow females to rest and go out and find new partners more quickly, and so reproduce more. Number 2. Apple Snail Apple snails are a kind of aquatic gastropod. And yeah, it's not a fish. But do you seriously want nothing but fish all the time? This is a cool snail, so let's get on with it. They are a freshwater species and are unusual because they have both a gill and a lung, meaning they are truly amphibious. They are a pretty common aquarium animal and they are considered a delicacy in Mexico, where they are known as Tigogolo. But you probably shouldn't just snack on ones you find in your friend's aquaria. It would be rude for a start. Before they get down to mating, they like to bury themselves in mud to make sure they are good and ready for all the effort. Then, once the deed is done, female snails can store male sperm for months, keeping it ready for when she feels like going through the whole ordeal of having kids. A pretty convenient system. Over several weeks, an apple snail can produce a clutch of eggs every four to seven days, over the course of several weeks, meaning that the numbers could get pretty big. Better invest in some high-rise blocks for that snail tank. Number 1. Splash Tetra The Splash Tetra is a tropical freshwater fish from South America. 
Here's another fish, where the males do all the childcare work, while the females hang out with their buddies drinking beer and watching sports. In the breeding season, the males will search out a perfect spot with some overhanging foliage. He then waits for a female to show up, and once she does, they will both leap from the water and clamp onto the leaf with their pelvic fins for up to 10 seconds. In this time, the female will release her eggs, and the male will fertilize them all over in under 10 seconds. Well, Mr. Splash, if you lasted a little longer, maybe she'd be willing to help out with changing diapers. The fish then fall back into the water, but they go again and again until there's 200 eggs on the leaf, and the female is done with it all. She heads back to the bar, while the male diligently splashes water on the eggs to make sure they stay moist and clean. He does this about every two minutes for up to 72 hours. When the fry happens, and fall into the water, his work is finally done. Did you ever imagine fish reproduction being so fascinating? Would your ideal relationship be anything like any of these underwater creatures? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!